Hi, this is Lisa Michelle, and I like to help entrepreneurs start and grow a digital products business. If that's something that you're interested in, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos as they're released. In this video, I want to go over some of the changes or improvements that BookBolt has made to their platform in the, I guess, over the past week or so. So if you have a BookBolt account and you haven't logged in recently, you may not know that the upgrade is there. And if you're interested in BookBolt or you're just curious to know, you know, what they're up to, then this video may be for you. So right now I'm on the home page and you would log in as usual and click over here where it says BookBolt Designer. And actually up here, it would usually say research or create. So you would go under create and then go into BookBolt Designer. So I'm already logged in. So what I would go to normally would be right in the middle. You'd have a pop-up that would say, do you want to create an interior or, or an, a cover? But now they've got this new button up here where it says try the Book Bolt Studio. That's where all the changes are. So if you go ahead into that pop-up that will show up here, you'll go to the other, the older editor. So if you want to see what's new on the, on the website, you have to go up here and click on the new um, studio button. And it'll take you to a new dashboard um, okay, hold on a second because I was playing around with it earlier. Let me just do a new project so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so you get this pop up that'll ask you, do you want to work on a cover and interior? Because now with BookBolt, you can create a cover and interior in the same um, area. You don't have to do a cover separately from the interior anymore. But what we're going to do is work on a paperback interior. The sizes are pretty much the same. You can have whatever size uh, book you want, custom size, eight and a half by 11, eight by 10, so on and so forth. We'll do white paper with a black and white interior with 24 pages. Um, and I'll just name it test. Okay. So this will bring you to this dashboard here. And I've got all 24 pages here because I selected 24 pages and they're all formatted for, I think it was eight by 10 that I had selected. And since it's the interior, um, let's see, so many things I want to show you. One of the first things is the fact that you can now add in your interior and kind of map it out a lot easier. So let me just show you what I mean by that. This little maze icon here, you click on that and it'll be taken to an interior templates library. Now the little hashtags up here where it says notebook, word puzzle, maze, money, to do, office, planner, health, food, plants, travel, and sport. So that just, you know, just helps you kind of figure out exactly what category you need for your particular journal or planner or notebook. So um, I really didn't have anything specific in mind. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of, of everything they have. But let's just say I wanted to do um, some type of a, of a notebook where I've got a lot of different types of pages. And the first, let's say the first two pages, I want to have uh, uh, journal pages. I will click on this journal page. And you can preview the page to see what it looks like. But then it gives you three different types. It's narrow journal, college journal, or wide journal. So let's say I want to have them all college ruled. I would just click on the first three pages and then click on next. All right. I can pick the margins. I can pick the line color. So if I want the line color to be darker, to be black, I can click on black and say, okay. Um, if I want the lines to be thicker, I can select the width and just click on submit. And then it'll make the changes to those pages over here, which is really nice. Now, once the pages are formatted, I can go in here, move it around. I can change the color. If I wanted to say, let me move it in a little bit. If I wanted to say, um, you know, I want the lines to be uh, red. I can do that and click on OK. This top line here, if I wanted that line to be um, darker, I can make it darker for whatever reason. OK. Um, so let's say, so we got the first, uh, three pages formatted. Let's say for this fourth page, I wanted to add in a planner page. I can click on planner 
I can, you know, kind of preview the page to see if it's something that I might want. If I want to use it, I can use it. If not, I can click out of it. And let's say I want to have dot, like the dot um, graph paper for the next, well, let's say I want to do it for the next three pages. Click on that. It'll show me where I am right now. So where I left off, I can click on the next three pages. If I wanted to make it every, you know, three pages have a dot graph, and then I want to have journal pages, and then the next three pages have a dot graph, I can do that as well. All right, so that makes it really convenient. Because before I would make up books with different types of pages, and it was sometimes a little bit tricky trying to get them all formatted properly because I couldn't see them all laid out this way. But this makes it really simple. Um, another thing that is helpful is if you click on this maze icon and click on basically like any of these pages, really, um, I can select all, click on next, and then I can add a page number um, at the bottom, which is new. So click on that, click on submit, and then it'll add the page number for you at the bottom. Now, what I will tell you is, and I, I know BookBolt is still working on some of these upgrades. They did say that they're still, they're just rolling these out and they're still working on it. So I will do another video. I'll, I'll probably do a full tutorial once I'm sure that all the bugs are worked out and that everything is good to go. But um, you can double click on that page number right now and you can change the font if you want. And... So if I wanted to have the font a different color, I can do that. I'm sorry, different. If I wanted to have the page number a different font, I can do that. Um, and I can add, you know, page. I mean, I can add, um, you know, I could add other characters at the end of the page number. But what I will say is wait until you're finished with your complete book before you add the page number. If you think you might want to change the font or add other text to your page number. Because what I noticed is if I add it to this page, um, it does not add it to every page. So, you know, you don't want to go through and have to do that for every page. So wait until you're sure that the journal or your book is complete. And then if you want to change the font of your page number or add some other characters after that, um, do it at the end. Uh, another thing is if you're doing a word puzzle, and as long as it's not something where you've got to upload your own word, like a crossword puzzle, you've got to upload a file with your own information there. But if it's something like whatever puzzle that was, I just clicked on. Um, if I click on this, you can add the solution. And the solution should show up um, behind the puzzle. So that's another thing. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, images. If you want to add an image, okay, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it on that. Let's see where I have a journal page. If I wanted to add an image, like an image behind here, I can. I can click on the little image icon. And because it's uh, connected to Pixabay, you can click on Pixabay and, you know, um, type in whatever it is you want. Click on it, anything, anything, click on it, and then I can either go over here and move the image around so that's behind the lines, or I could just leave the image on the front and then change the opacity so that you can, you know, barely see it. And it's just kind of back there. So if you like to have, you know, images behind your, you know, your journals, you can still do that um, with images from Pixabay or I think your own, yeah, your own uploads. So let's see what else I might want to put back. Um, let's see what clip art they have. Yeah. So, you know, if I were doing a journal for, um, that's related to a child or an activity book or something like that or a themed book 
I could put images in the back. I think that's really cute. All right, so that's that. And I think the next thing I wanted to show you was, oh, okay. <laughs> I remember what it is. All right, blank page. Um, I know I've gotten a lot of questions about Bookbowl and its ability to create coloring pages. And what I noticed, and I can't say for sure this will work with every image, but I played around with this and it worked for, it worked a hundred, well not a hundred percent of the time, worked maybe 80% of the time. And what I did was, let's say I'll look for, look for an image like this. This might work. If you have an image where there's a black outline like this, and the thicker the outline, the better, I see. Um, you can remove the color to turn it into a coloring page. And you don't want to create an entire coloring book using, you know, pictures from websites like Pixabay or Pexels, even though that they're commercially licensed. You don't want to necessarily do that. But if you had a journal and you just had a couple of pages that maybe were coloring pages, you could probably get away with it or create your own in some other software, or upload it from, you know, maybe purchase the clip art from somewhere else for that purpose. But if you had a couple of Im images that had the black outline and you wanted to turn it into a coloring page, uh, if you click on effects and click on black and white, yeah, see, it takes all the color out it makes a coloring page like that's so that's super easy so you don't have to go to another uh, program or the website to to do that and then import it back into book bolt it just kind of works like that but it's got to be an image like that that has the black line so let's say we'll try one more and the clip art seems to work best so if you want to try it um see puppy Uh, yeah, see the regular image won't have the outline and this one wouldn't work. I don't think because it doesn't have a black outline around it. This one might. Yeah, this one should work too. So we'll go to effects. Remove it. Boom. Look at that. That's, that's so easy. I love that. I love that. So yeah, I wouldn't use all the images from Pixabay, but if you have other images that you can use to have the outline, I don't see why you can't use it for a couple of pictures uh, in your book, just to maybe enhance it. All right, um, this is masking. There was, they had masking before. Um, I'm doing interiors, so I wouldn't necessarily need to have a pattern, but I will show you the pattern really quickly. Let's pretend that we have one a pattern on this page, or you can do this for the covers as well. Uh, let's say we're doing a journal for dog walkers or something. We have this paw print here. You can right click to duplicate. Right click to duplicate. Okay, now I'm gonna change the color. Let's make this one red, make this one yellow. Wait, yellow. And then well, it's not really yellow, but does it matter? All right, so then we'll um, just kind of left click and, and select all of these to group them. Right click on all of them to group them. And then go over here to this little brick wall for pattern. Click OK. And just drag it down. So now you've got your own kind of background or digital paper, quote unquote. So if you used to have to upload digital paper for your book covers or for whatever else, you don't really have to do that. So you have that here, you go up to pattern options and then you can you know, make them bigger, make them really tiny. And I've seen composition books that have covers like this actually. Um, where there are a lot of patterns and then they'll have, um, you know, like a rectangle up here. And another, maybe inner rectangle. Right, I'm sure you've seen that. And then they'll just have like composition notebook in here, something like that. 
uh, dog walking journal or whatever. But yeah, so that's that's there. And I think really that's it for this first um, pass. I just wanted to just share with you the update because uh, I was kind of excited about it. And I've gotten a lot of questions about some of the things that they um, seem to be working on. So I guess that's a good thing. And I'll keep an eye out for other updates. And like I said, do a uh, more thorough tutorial at a future date. But if you have any questions about this one in the meantime, as usual, please leave them in the comments below. If you like the video, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, until the next time, uh, peace. Thanks for watching.